The thing I think about all the time, the question I have is why do we help other people? Why do we volunteer our time to help others? What is it about giving our time, resources, and energy that is so compelling to us as a species that we do it all over the place? Not just here, not just in this place, but across the country, around the world, every culture, every society, all throughout human experience. Human beings help each other, but why? The answer to this question is very important to us because we work with companies to design and implement their employee volunteering programs. So that means that employees across companies are looking to mobilize people to get involved in communities where they live and work. Millions of people around the world. So the recent explosion in neuroscience around the world, again, in the last few years, has offered some insight as to what the answer is. And it turns out the answer to this question is buried deep down inside of our neural net, in our brains. And there are two compelling drivers that make us want to help other people. The first has to do with pleasure, and the second has to do with pain. The first is part of a reward system known as the helper's high. Now, we have a number of reward systems as a species that help us persist and move forward, look after ourselves, look after our offspring. It has kept us alive as a species. And when we help other people, when we take our time to contribute to them and help them, and we can see their face, it's absolutely critical. We can't be helping a stat or an issue, or we can't be just helping by stacking chairs, although that may be a part of it. We have to be able to visualize a person's face to get this reward this uh, helper's high to happen. And the other part is we have to understand the significance of the task. How is what I'm doing benefiting that person? If those conditions are met, there's a concoction of endorphins that are released in our brain that give us a feeling of euphoria. It's very similar to a yoga high, a runner's high, and there's another very, very important activity that as a species we're participating in on an ongoing basis that has made sure that we're all still here. Procreation, right? Sexual activity. And this idea of volunteering to help others, in science, when they study it, they realize that it's very similar in its concoction to a yoga high, runner's high, and sexual activity. So when you go to volunteer next time, if you have a t-shirt that says, I volunteer at sexy science underneath, you wouldn't be far off the mark. It's about right. <laughs> That's the pleasure. The pain is the other side of the thing. So I'll give you a story. I'm um, cutting some radishes at the dinner party. You're standing across the counter from me. And I don't know if this happened to you, but the knife's a little slippery and it slips and I cut the end of my finger off and there's, there's blood everywhere, right? Now I feel that pain in my brain through it's something called the pain matrix. It's all through my brain. It lights up, neurons light up, and I know I got a problem. I need to do something about it. You're across the counter and you're looking at me and you're thinking, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, that is a lot of blood. Wow, that's disgusting. Okay, that's the first reaction. The second reaction is I should get a Band-Aid or a, I don't know, a bath towel. That is a lot of blood. I don't know what to do. I need a help, okay? That's what we call empathy. And there are those two reactions. One is aversion where you can feel it, and the other one is you have to stop the pain. And that is because there are neurons buried deep inside of your brain that cannot tell the difference between when pain happens to you and when it happens to someone else. That's empathy. We want to reach out and we want to do something. So these two drivers together work to compel us to help other people, which is a good thing when you think about it because it's kept us alive as a species. We look after our own people. We look after our group. We protect ourselves from you know, animals and dinosaurs from getting eaten and that kind of thing. 95% of the world's population's brain works like this. The other 5% have issues, uh, brain issues like uh, psychopathy or... Um, autism or something like that. But all of our brains typically fire up when we see someone else in pain and want to do something unless the default setting kicks in. And the default is we look after our in-group. And that's a problem. It works really well for your in-group. And your in-group are people who look like you, same socioeconomic uh, status basically, they're from your area, they share your values. You have a lot of empathy for them. You don't have a lot of empathy for people in your out-group. And that's unfortunate. That allows us as human beings to do terrible things to each other. On the one hand, we're very willing to help, intervene, assist, give our time and energy, but not for those people. And for every in-group you have, you have hundreds of out-groups. And there's a way to deal with this. And it is to take advantage of the neuroplasticity of your brain. Until recently, scientists used to believe that the brain is what the brain was about the age of, I don't know, 14 or 18 or something like that. It's fixed. But now we know that new neural pathways grow 
break down, grow all the time. And that's known as neuroplasticity. And what we do with employee volunteering is we take people into a situation where they have an experience with their outgroup, and they're forced to deal with that. And we're looking for three fundamental changes through employee volunteering, and they all have to do with perspective. The first change is a psychological change. This is how I perceive myself in the world, right? Who am I? What does it mean? The second is a convictional change. What do I believe to be true about the world? And that's a tough one. This is where implicit bias comes in. And the third one is a behavioral change, how I act in the world. Instead of thinking about employee volunteering in terms of how many walls can I paint or chairs can I stack, we need to start thinking about what kind of change are we seeing inside of a person because that lasts, that's generational, and that persists. So to do this, you need to make sure the volunteering experience involves three opportunities. The first is to alert to the situation. What does this mean? Okay, what is going on? You orient to it. What does it mean to me? And finally, you act. How is my behavior going to change? And creating that kind of space in volunteering isn't easy, but it is possible. And that's the kind of thing that changes our minds literally. So we believe in this stuff so much that a few years ago we began an initiative with um, the UN. It's known as Impact 2030. And the idea is that we're going to help achieve the sustainable development goals around the world through employee volunteering. And we believe in it so much that we came here to Los Angeles to see what we could do here with the companies. And we met with the Mayor's Fund and the Olympic Committee, and we're exploring opportunities for employee volunteering to help address social issues like homelessness or um, poverty in this city. And the thing about transformative approach to volunteering is this. It's not just helping other people. It actually affords us the opportunity to go beyond that to something lasting and more permanent because we can move to a place where we understand what it means to belong to each other. And this is the key. If we can unravel the default setting in our brain of in and out groups, I'm us, I look after us, I don't look after you, this is for me, my problem is you. If we can address that through an immersive learning environment, we can rethink things. We have the opportunity to address the chronic uh, distrust and bias that we see in our socio-political landscape. We can build communities that address these social issues through a sense of belonging to each other and coming together to co-create solutions rather than that's your problem and it's not my problem. So in your workplace, the question is this. How could employee volunteering contribute to an improved culture, a more inclusive culture, a less biased culture, uh, one culture where there's more teamwork. Is it possible that by going out, taking your teams out, and getting involved in the community, you guys could build communities in your workplace where you share more, understand more, and welcome more diversity? So I encourage you to go back to your workplace and consider participating in your employee volunteering programs. And if you don't have one, start one. Thank you.